Hello and welcome to Physiology Open. Humans have different states of brain arousal, ranging from awake and alert to sleep, which itself consists of different stages, uh, that is NREM sleep with four stages and REM sleep. But how do we change brain states between different states of arousal? That is, how do we actually switch from wakefulness to sleep and then from NREM to REM sleep and then again from sleep to wakefulness? So basically, there are switches of arousal states happening. One here from awake to NREM, then one here from NREM to REM and then from REM to awake state after a substantial duration of sleep is over. Now, if there is any trouble in making the switch, we get sleep disorders. Example, if switch from awake to sleep state is excessively delayed, it's a sleep initiation disorder. Then, with the induction of sleep, you should first enter NREM sleep and not into REM sleep directly. If that happens, that is also a disorder. It happens in narcolepsy. Then secondly, once you enter a state, that state should be maintained for a specific duration. So once you are awake, that state should be maintained and you should not feel sleepy for a considerable amount of time in a day. That will be abnormal, isn't it? Similarly, once you sleep, that should also be maintained. It should not be that you wake up frequently in between sleep. So how these complicated phenomena of induction of a brain state and then its maintenance actually happen? Let's dive straight into the circuitry and talk about its various components. So one component is ascending reticular activating system or RAS present in brain stem. Then two major areas in hypothalamus that is a tubromammillary nucleus in posterior hypothalamus and a VLPO or ventrolateral preoptic nucleus in anterior hypothalamus and finally basal forebrain. Now these areas have different types of neurons in the terms of which neurotransmitter they release and which arousal state they are active. This ascending reticular activating system and the posterior hypothalamus have neurons which are wake on neurons that is they are active during a wake state. Posterior hypothalamus has histaminergic neurons and in RAS there are two areas. One is a locus cerulus with norepinephrinergic neurons and the other is dorsal rapid nucleus which has serotonergic neurons. So all these neurons are wake on neurons and we can call these as wake promoting areas. Then this anterior hypothalamus that is VLPO and basal forebrain have GABAergic neurons that is neurons which release GABA and are active during NREM phase of sleep. So these are NREM on neurons. So we can call this area as sleep promoting area. Now with this logic there should be some neurons which are active during REM sleep also. Yes, there are neurons in this reticular activating system in uh, lateral dorsal tegmental nucleus that is LDT and uh, pedunculopontine tegmental nucleus that is PPT nucleus which release acetylcholine and are REM on neurons. Also this basal forebrain has some acetylcholine secreting neurons which are active in wake as well as in REM sleep. So these are wake on REM on neurons. Now remember all these neurons project to cerebral cortex via thalamus and produce characteristic EG waves of each brain state. Okay, before you get confused with so many nuclei and neurons, let me simplify this little bit for you. See that the hypothalamic neurons are involved in wakefulness and NREM sleep. So there is interaction among these hypothalamic neurons to switch between wakefulness and NREM sleep, right? While these brainstem RAS neurons are involved in wakefulness and REM sleep. So there is interaction between this reticular system nuclei for switching from REM sleep to wakefulness. Okay? And there is interaction between these hypothalamic and brainstem nuclei to switch between NREM and REM sleep and to fine tune other switches. Okay, so how does interaction between these different types of neurons causes switch between different states? See, state switching is kind of a seesaw. Till the time one side is more powerful, it keeps the state to itself. However, the other side also keeps trying. Then after some time, some factors weigh in which increase the weight of other side and decrease that of the first side. And that time state switching occurs. 
So let's understand this in terms of neuronal activity and connections. In a simplified scheme, all wake-on neurons should inhibit sleep neurons and sleep neurons should inhibit all wake-on neurons with balance tilting to each side with time. So let's start from the time when we are awake. So based on the discussion till now, can you tell which neurons are active when we are awake and which are inactive? Yes, all these three wake-on neurons that is uh, norepinephrineergic, uh, serotonergic and histaminergic neurons are active. And all sleep neurons that is NREM on and REM on neurons are inactive. And by similar logic, we can tell that to fall asleep, that is to enter NREM sleep, NREM on neurons should become active and the wake on neurons should be inhibited, isn't it? So what happens during the wake state, all these wake on neurons keep these sleep neurons inhibited. Actually, histaminergic hypothalamic neurons inhibit NREM on neurons and uh, RAS uh, norepinephrineergic and serotonergic neurons inhibit REM on neurons. See, I told you before that hypothalamic neurons are involved in wakefulness and NREM sleep and uh, RAS neurons are involved in wakefulness and REM sleep. So, hypothalamic wake on neurons inhibit NREM on neurons and uh, RAS wake on neurons inhibit REM on neurons. But uh, one more interesting thing here that uh, this histaminergic neurons actually excite uh, these uh, LDT, PPT, acetylcholine releasing Remon neurons and the basal brain acetylcholine releasing wake on Remon neurons. This is because along with histamine, acetylcholine also maintains alert brain state. So if we see in terms of neurotransmitters during wake state, cortical histamine, serotonin and noradrenaline levels will be high. Acetylcholine will also be seen while uh, GABA levels will be very low. Now while we are awake, we should remain awake for a considerable time, isn't it? So awake state should be self-sustaining, that is it should promote itself. For this, there exists a positive feedback loop. So see this connection here, histamine wake on neurons excite basal forebrain wake on remon neurons which in turn excite one more very important set of wake on neurons that is uh, hypocretin wake on neurons present in lateral hypothalamus. These hypocretin wake on neurons in turn excite histamine wake on neurons. So it appears there is a never ending loop here which sustains wake state. But this loop needs to be stopped after some time so that we can sleep, isn't it? So there is another control over these hypocretin neurons. The other wake on neurons which we stated uh, that is RAS neurons actually inhibit these hypocretin wake on neurons which in turn activate these norepinephrine serotonergic neurons. So in this loop, hypocretin neurons are promoting their own inhibition while in the other loop which we talked first, hypocretin neurons are promoting their own activation. See this is a positive feedback here, right? Also these norepinephrine and serotonergic neurons tend to inhibit themselves too. So their inhibition on hypocretin wake on neurons will not be that much effective during wake state because they are inhibiting themselves. So till the time this effect is powerful, wake state will be maintained. Now for the initiation of sleep, basically two things can be done. Either this self-sustaining loop should switch off. This will make these wake on neurons less powerful and thus inhibition of VLPO activity by wake on neurons will decrease. Or with time, these VLPO and REM on neurons should become more powerful and inhibit these wake on neurons, thus decreasing the activity in this self sustaining loop. Basically, both types of activity are happening in body. For the first one, that is a switching of this loop, these hypocretin neurons, which we spoke of, act as switching center. Basically, for the switch, if we can make these neurons less active, their excitation input to all wake on neurons will decrease. Hence, these wake on neurons will no longer be able to inhibit sleep neurons powerfully. So, NREM on neurons will resume activity, isn't it? Actually, these hypocretin neurons are sensitive to environmental cues. For example, glucose and leptin levels in blood, which indicate well fed state, inhibits these neurons. On the other hand, ghrelin, a hormone important for initiation of meal, stimulates these neurons. So in well-fed state, these neurons will become less active, while in hunger, they are more active. So are you getting now why we feel sleep after a good meal, while hunger keeps us awake? Then uh, they also receive information from suprachiasmatic nucleus. 
That's why our wake sleep cycle is affected by light. Then uh, information from limbic system that is amygdala also goes there. So you know why emotional states interfere with induction of sleep or sometimes prevent waking up. That is a person does not want to get out of bed. It depends on how limbic system is influencing these hypocretin neurons. Now the second one, even these NREM neurons can be made more powerful. Actually, like this separate control is working for wake on neurons, a separate control is also working for these NREM on neurons. These neurons are kept inhibited by other neurons also. Now, adenosine, a metabolite, accumulates in wakefulness due to increased brain activity, especially in basal forebrain. This inhibits these inhibiting neurons, causing disinhibition of PLPO NREM on neurons. So, once they become disinhibited, they become powerful. And they in turn inhibit the wake on neurons, thus initiating sleep. And they inhibit these hypocretin neurons also, making themselves more and more powerful. And hence also maintaining an REM sleep. So this effect of adenosine on induction of sleep is known as metabolite theory of sleep. So when adenosine is more, there is induction of sleep. And as sleep progresses, this metabolite concentration goes down again. Its effect decreases and NREM on neurons again become inactive. Do you know that why having a strong cup of coffee keeps us awake? Well, the caffeine blocks the adenosine receptors and prevents adenosine from acting and hence prevents induction of sleep. Anyways, now can you tell what will be the cortical concentration of uh, neurotransmitters in NREM sleep? Well, cortical GABA levels will be high because we are seeing NREM on neurons release GABA. But other neurotransmitters that is the norepinephrine, serotonin, histamine and acetylcholine will be low. Okay, let's go to next level. How a switch is made from NREM to REM sleep? Remember that these NREM neurons inhibit all wake on neurons. So even these uh, serotonergic and norepinephrinergic neurons are inhibited. So as sleep progresses, NREM neurons exert more inhibition of these wake on neurons in RAS so that they no more inhibit REM neurons. So after some time threshold is reached causing switch to REM sleep. So neurotransmitter wise during REM sleep there will be quite high acetylcholine but uh, lesser norepinephrine, serotonin and histamine. See acetylcholine is present in cortex during wakefulness also but much less than that in REM sleep. Since norepinephrine and serotonin neurons are inhibiting these acetylcholine producing REMON neurons during wakefulness. Okay, let's now see the final one that uh, how from REM sleep switch happens to wake state. Well, here between wake on neurons and NREM on neurons, we saw mutual inhibition. But here between wake on neurons and REMON neurons, we have cycling behavior. That is, these neurons inhibit and REMON neurons. But REMON neurons actually excite these wake on neurons. So when REMON neurons become active during REM sleep, they excite these uh, wake on neurons of RAS more and more and hence causing wakefulness. Okay, I know the connections are quite complex but you think of this simplified scheme first, then project it to complex circuit. This will help you remember the circuit of induction and maintenance of various brain states. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, do like and share the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel Physiology Open. Thank you.